Okay, this is chapter 7 problems. I'm here with my phys physics class. Eustace and um, Jacob are painting. Remember I said not to put that much paint on it? You were dripping. Don't drip. Okay? Don't drip. Okay, now, you don't need a lot of paint. You've got to take slow. Slow and steady. Okay, now, uh, can an action force exist without a reaction force? This is chapter 7 problems. This is going to be Newton's third law, action and reaction. So the first one begins with, can an action force exist without a reaction force? What do you think? No, every force is an interaction involving a pair of forces. A single force doesn't exist. Okay? When a hammer exerts a force on a nail, how does this amount of force compare with that of the nail on the hammer? It's going to be the same. If you hit a, a nail with a hammer, yes, the, you're, you're going to wonder, well, how much force did I hit the nail with? Well, you hit the force with, you hit the nail with a force of X, let's say. Yes? Well, the nail hit the hammer with the same force. They're equal. Even though the hammer accelerated, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, let's catch up. Uh, it says, when you walk on the floor, what pushes you along? The floor. Okay. State Newton's third law of motion. When one object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts an equal force in the opposite direction of the first. Clear? Consider hitting a baseball with a bat. If we call the force the bat exerts against the ball, the action force, identify the reaction force. The baseball hits the bat. The ball hits the bat, the baseball, the, the ball hits the bat, the bat hits the ball, and vice versa. Clear? Okay. Let's go on to the next slide, which will contain question number six. It says, if a bat hits a ball with 100 newtons of force, can the ball exert less than 100 newtons of force on the ball, or more than 100, I'm sorry, more than 1,000 newtons? Can, if the, with 1,000 newtons of force, can the ball exert less than 1,000 newtons or more than 1,000 newtons? Anybody know? No. The reaction force always has equal the same magnitude as the action force. Now, this may be, seem very simple to you, and it does. Everybody's shaking their head. This makes perfect sense. Omar is like going, yes, of course, this makes sense. But I promise you that many of you will make the mistake that you're not applying Newton's third law. It's an, it's, an easy, it's an easy law to get confused. All right, number seven says, number seven says, if the world pulls you downward against your chair, what is the reaction force? Now, first of all, what's the action, not necessarily the reaction? The action force has nothing to do with the chair. It's the world pulling you downward. So the world's pulling you downward against the chair. So the reaction force would be is you pulling upward on the world. You pulling upward on the world. So that's a little bit uh, different. They want to try to confuse you with the concept of the chair. Uh, when a cannon is fired, are the forces on the cannonball and on the cannon equal in magnitude? Are the accelerations of the two equal? Uh, the forces are equal, yes, but the accelerations are unequal. And uh, so the larger cannon would have a smaller acceleration and the small cannonball would have a larger acceleration. And number nine, when a cannon is fired, why do the cannonball and cannon have very different accelerations? Uh, it's because of the masses. Uh, equal forces on unequal masses produce unequal accelerations. So the forces are the same, so the larger mass will give a smaller acceleration and vice versa. Okay, number 10. Identify the force that propels a rocket. Identify the force that propels the rocket. All right, so <clears throat> you have a rocket, rocket and it's firing out gases. So the gases are pushing against the air, 
or push the exhaust gas are pushing the rod they push the rocket in reaction so um, so the gases push against the rocket and the rocket pushes against the gases a long time ago people thought that the gases push against the air and then the air pushes against the rocket but it's actually quite different than that it's think the gas that come out for and the rocket how does a helicopter get its lifting force how does a helicopter give its lifting force now this has something to do with air so the propellers the helicopter blade forces air downward and the reaction is the air forces blades upward uh, providing lift so the forces push air down and the air pushes blades up so uh, people thought that the helicopter would be the same as the rocket, and it's actually not true. Uh, the rocket is pushing against the exhaust, uh, not against the air. True or false, when a net force is exerted on a system, the system will accelerate. But when an applied force and its reaction are within a system, the system as a whole does not accelerate. That's very interesting. So give that a thought, uh, and then we'll take a break, and you'll never know I was gone. So it says, and that's actually true, in, in a closed system. So uh, we'll come back to that question in a moment. Uh, we'll extend the time for this slide, and we'll see what we can see. All right, let's just read that once more. True or false, when a net force ex is exerted on a system, the system will accelerate. But when an uh, applied force and its reaction are within a system, the system as a whole does not accelerate. And that is because you have the, the action and the reaction. The action and the reaction, they're equal and opposite. So you wouldn't have any acceleration because of the equal and opposite. You would have zero net force on the whole system. When, <clears throat> when, can, when can two kicks on a soccer ball produce a net force of zero on the ball. Well, if two soccer players kick them both at the same time, it happens, and the ball won't go anywhere. Uh, you might hurt your toe, but the ball's not going to go anywhere. When both kicks are simultaneously equal magnitude and opposite in direction. So you can see that oftentimes players will use this enormous leg, str leg strength to kick a ball, and they both kick it at the same time and they go flying they hurt their foot and yet the ball doesn't go anywhere it's kind of comical actually why don't the enormous number of interatomic forces inside a baseball accelerate the baseball because they're all they all cancel each other the net force is zero so they ultimately will cancel uh, in the baseball uh, they act within system so there is no net force on the system so that's kind of like the question 12 that we were looking at. Uh, <clears throat> that would be a great example uh, of uh, for question 12. That would be a great example. Okay. Next. Now this is going to be a little confusing, so we're going to kind of take our time with this. Now let's look at the different forces. You have the horse applying a force. You have uh, uh, the ground applying a force, that's the friction, okay? You have the cart applying a force, you have pulls, pushes, uh, the farmers going to market, and you have all of these forces and peas and all kinds of weird stuff. So study this drawing very carefully. You have an, a big F going in opposite directions. You have two small Fs going in opposite directions. And you have two P's going in opposite directions. So you have two capital F's, two small F's, and two P's. So referring to figure 714, that's what we were just looking at. How many horizontal forces are exerted on the cart? Not the horse, but the cart. What is the horizontal net force on the cart? How many horizontal forces are exerted on just the cart? Two. P and small f. f net is p minus f. f net is p minus f. So there are two horizontal uh, 
two horizontal net forces on the cart. Uh, all right. There are two. There are two forces on the cart. Okay. Let's look at that. Let's look at that once more. And we'll look at the the former drawing, and we'll look at the um, the question that follows. Okay. Just hold on for a second. Okay, so what I did was I went and looked at the question. I put the question back on with the horse here. And it simply is how many forces are acting on the cart. There are two, that's obvious. P and F. And the net force is also now obvious because it's going to be uh, P minus the small f, the friction. Okay, so that is a little bit more obvious. Now, the next one is a little bit more difficult, and what I'll do is uh, I will um, let this read a little bit. Uh, it says, it says uh, referring to figure 714, which we did, how many horizontal forces are exerted on the cart? What is the horizontal net force on the cart? So we know that there are two forces on the cart, uh, small f and p. And it's obvious now, reading the question, looking at the drawing, that it's going to be, the net force is going to be P minus F. So that's a little bit more obvious now. So what I'll, what I'll do now is I will, um, I will show the next, you know, the slide again, but I will read the question to you, uh, and we'll see if we can make that work. All right, it says, <clears throat> how many horizontal forces are exerted on the horse in figure uh, 7.14 uh, and there are two F and P and what's the net force capital F and capital P and what's the nef net force would be capital F minus large P okay so let's see uh, if that makes any sense let's see if that makes any sense now what we did was we were looking at the horse and you can see that's obviously on the that are acting on the horse it's capital P and capital F. Uh, the capital F is in the forward direction, the capital P is in the reverse direction. So that makes perfect sense. And this is uh, this is the question as it stands. It says how many horizontal forces are exerted on the horse in the figure 7.14. What is the horizontal net force on the horse? So the horizontal net force on the horse uh, will be uh, F minus P, and obviously, again, capital F minus P, minus capital P, and the two forces are capital F and capital P. All right, so let's see if we can read the next problem. Now it says, how many horizontal forces are exerted on the horse cart system in the figure 7.14 what is the horizontal net force on the horse cart system there are two capital F and small f and then the net force would be capital F minus small f so how many horizontal force are exerted on the horse cart system and what's the net force okay good so we got it all right, so let's stop this and see if we can pull it aside. So now you can clearly see that and that the P's cancel and that the the small f and the large f that canceled, but they're on the road. They're part of the road uh, that helped them uh, get along, uh, as we say. So then the uh, to just to review the questions as they are shown, and that is that uh, how many horizontal forces are exerted on the horse cart system and what is the horizontal net force on the horse cart system so you know that it is going to be um, those two and they're going to be capital F and small f and then the net force would be um, capital F minus small f. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Okay, if you hit a wall with a force of 200 newtons, how much force does the wall exert back on you? It's going to be 
200 newtons. That's pretty straightforward. Can you physically touch another person without that person touching you with the same magnitude of force? Absolutely not. It is inevitable. And third one is fill in the blanks. Newton's first law is often called the law of inertia. Newton's second law highlights the concept of force, mass, and acceleration. And Newton's th third law is the law of action and reaction. So let's stop this and we'll uh, make things a little bit shorter for the next two slides. Three sets of double boxes on a table. Rank the following from greatest to least. The normal force that the table exerts on the set. Well, that would be equal to the weight, which would be proportional to the mass. So A is... 2.4, B is 2.4, and C is 2.4, so they're all equal. And then B says the normal force exerted by the bottom block, so it would be B, C, A, because, because 1.4 is being supported, so that would be the greatest, and then 1.2 is being supported, that would be the next greatest, and then 1. So it would go B, B, C, A. Would be that, would be the, uh, the uh, alignment. So the answer would be, as I said, A equals B equals C. Uh, they would all have the same normal force because they all have the same weight. And then block 1.4 is has the greatest weight, and then 1.2, and then 1. So the answer would be BCA. Now the next problem, it says a van exerts a force on the trailers of different masses, M. All velocities, V, are constant. Compared with the force exerted on the trailer, rank the magnitude of the force the trailer exerted on the van are all pairs of forces equal in magnitude. Yes, they are all equal in magnitude because they're all going to constant velocity and Newton's, Newton's third law says for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction and therefore uh, whatever force the car exerts on the trailer, the trailer exerts on the car, so they're all going to be equal forces uh, going either way. So A equals B equals C. No problem. Okay. When you, when you rub your hands together, can you push harder on one hand than the other? Your weight is the result of a gravitational force on the earth on your body, what is the corresponding reaction force? So we have two questions to look at. The first one is no, each hand pushes equally on the other. It has nothing to do with being human, it has to do with the law of physics. <clears throat> For every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Next, let's look at it again. Your weight is a result of gravitational forces here on Earth on your body. What is the corresponding reaction force? Your body uh, pulling on Earth action, your weight is the result of gravitational earth on your body, the gravitational force of earth on your body, so the reaction force would be your body on earth. It says, uh, why can you exert greater force on the pedals of a bicycle than pull up on the handlebars? Why can you exert greater force on the pedals of a bicycle if you pull up on the handlebars? Because you're you're adding, you're 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 actually increasing your weight. Uh, it says when you pull up on the handlebars, the handlebars push down on you with the same amount of force. This force is transmitted to the pedals. So. The, the force you pull up 
on the handlebars is to force the handlebars pull down on you, kind of creating a more apparent weight, but that same force is exerted on the pedals as well. The next problem is consider, consider the two forces acting on a person who stands still, namely the downward pull of gravity and the upward support of the floor. Are these forces equal or opposite? Do they comprise an action-reaction pair? Why or why not? Yes, they are the only forces acting on a non-accelerating person. No, they are not parts of a single interaction. They are namely interactions person, earth, and floor person. The equal and opposite forces described in the question act on the same body. Okay, 28. If you walk on a log that is floating in the water, the log moves backwards. Why? The backward force on the log moves it backwards. So you're pushing it backwards. That's why it's going backwards. You know, if you think about how it's moving, you're pushing backwards and the log is pushing back against you. Why is it easier to walk on a carpeted floor than a smooth, polished floor? If you step off the ledge, if you step off a ledge, you accelerate noticeably towards Earth. Why does Earth accelerate towards you as well? Explain. Um, I have something to say about 29, actually, that I've uh, given a great thought to. Let me stop this and expand the answer frame so that I can um, talk to you before we answer 29 first. In addition to 29, think about if you're going shopping and you have a shopping cart and all four wheels move. Isn't it more difficult in a way to control it, to turn? You can't really turn a corner well because you keep going. The same is true relative to the carpet. There are fewer forces uh, that seem to be acting in favor of you. So one can exert a greater horizontal force on a carpet than on a polished floor because of the greater friction. Uh, this is this in turn provides a greater reaction force to provide traction for walking. So <clears throat> if the back wheels don't steer you can exert a greater force in the turning of the cart and in the result the wheels will provide a greater reaction to that. And then 30 is yes but the accelerations provided by these equal forces are quite unequal because of the great difference in masses being accelerated. Um, so the, lar the earth is so big you can't really, you know, it's so big and the mass is so enormous that the acceleration is negligible. When a racket hits a tennis ball, action and reaction forces occur between the racket and the ball. What other action-reaction pair of forces occur for the ball both before and after interaction with the racket? Neglect air resistance. There is an interaction between the ball and earth. Earth pulls down on ball. Ball pulls up on earth. Again, that may be true, but there's not going to be a tremendous amount of acceleration as a result of that because of the largeness of the earth. Suppose you're weighing yourself while standing next to the bathroom sink using the idea of action-reaction. Explain why the scale reading will be less when you push down on the sink. Why will the scale reading be more if you pull up on the sink? Well, you're going to simply, you know, increase your weight. Uh, you're going to add the forces. You're going to add not only your force, but you're going to add down a downward force. So you're going to add the two. Thereby, your, your weight, which is your nor the normal force, will be greater because you're still not accelerating. So you're going to have equal forces. Uh, you know, that increased downward force and then as a result, an equal, equal upward force and vice versa with the other one. Uh, <clears throat> when you push downward on the sink, the sink pushes you upward. This tends to lift you off the scale, decreasing the result of the scale. If you pull, if you pull upward on the sink, it will push you downward and increase the reading. And same, same general, same thing I said, put it slightly in different words relative to action reaction. So if you're pushing down, it'll make you go up. If you're pushing up, it'll make you go down. So same idea. 
you're simply adding forces to the downward or you're adding negative forces to the upward. In other words, you're, you're decreasing uh, your, your support force. When a high jumper leaves the ground, what is the source of upward force that accelerates her or him? What force acts after her feet are no longer in contact with the ground? What is the acceleration force to an, uh, to an action force of 1,000 newtons exerted by the Earth on an orbiting communication satellite? So let's look at 33 first. The ground push, pushed upward on the jumper, which is the force that provides uh, an upward acceleration in the air. Only the force of gravity reacts on the jumper. Upward acceleration ceases, and the acceleration is downward g. Uh, let's do 35 again. If action equals reaction, why isn't the Earth pulled into orbit around a communication satellite? Okay, so the answer to 34 will be, what is the reaction force of, an, uh, of a, of a, of a 1,000 newton ex what is the reaction force to an action force of 1,000 newtons exerted by Earth on an orbiting communication satellite? Both pull on each other with 1,000 newtons, so they're equal. Uh, <clears throat> the support force and the weight, they're action-reaction. Uh, and 35, if action equals reaction, why isn't Earth pulled into orbit? around the communication satellite? Excellent question. Uh, think mass of the Earth. The mass of the Earth is absolutely enormous. Does that have anything to do with it whatsoever? Uh, both pull on each other with 1,000 Newtons. That may be true, um, uh, but uh, why, why isn't the Earth pulled into orbit? Uh, it is, but negligibly, due to the huge Earth's huge mass. So just think Earth's huge mass uh, when, you know, when talking about, well, you know, is the Earth really attracted to me? Well, yeah, it is. But this is an example of this. Uh, you have a little car and you have a truck or a bigger car. Uh, you're going to have the same forces in the accident, but which one's going to accelerate more or less? The car, the the bigger car, the pink car, or the purple car. So um, that's going to be the question, I'm sure. So take a good look at that picture. You have a small car and a large car, called a truck or something. And what's going to happen to the forces? What about the forces? Are the same. The masses are different, and the accelerations will be different but how different. So uh, it says a small car bumps into a van at rest in a parking lot. Upon which vehicle is the force of the impact greater? Which vehicle undergoes, it should be an S on there, undergoes the greater change in acceleration? Does your answer to 36 depend on the relative speeds of the objects? Impact force is the same on both, Newton's third law. Car with less mass, the car is less mass, as opposed to the van, so greater acceleration for the car. And uh, what about the speeds, the relative speeds? Well, no, although higher speeds increase both the action and reaction forces, magnitudes remain, magnitudes remain equal. Magnitudes remain equal. Let's take a quick break. You'll never know I was gone. Okay, it says, a speeding bus makes contact with a bug that splatters onto the windshield. Because of the sudden force, the unfortunate bug undergoes a sudden deceleration. Is the corresponding force that the bug exerts against the windshield greater, less, or the same? Is the resulting deceleration of the bug greater, of the bus, greater than, or less than, or the same as that of the bug? I'm not sure I read that right. I'm reading bug and bus. Uh, okay, now, consider two carts, one twice as massive as the other, that fly apart when com a compressed spring squeezed between them is released. How fast does the heavier cart roll compared to the lighter cart? Okay, now, 
So <clears throat> the forces are going to be the same on the bug and the bus, but the accelerations are going to be quite different. Uh, the bug undergoes a much greater deceleration than the bus. Uh, it has much less mass. So equal forces, small mass, great acceleration, large mass, small acceleration. In terms of the cart, the larger cart is going to accelerate to a smaller degree than the smaller cart. So large cart, low acceleration, small cart, large acceleration. So when it says, it says how fast does the heavier cart roll compared to the lighter cart? Slower. It goes slower. Okay, so let's wait for the answer. I gave myself a little too much time for this one, but uh, anyway, it gives you time to think. Just remember, uh, Newton's third law, forces are equal, correct? Now, so what's varying? Mass and acceleration. They're indirect. Large mass, small acceleration, and vice versa. Amount of force on each is the same, but different masses, so different accelerations. The twice as massive cart has half the acceleration as the lighter cart and gains half the speed. So remember, they are inversely proportionate, but they're still proportionate, but inversely so. Some people used to think that rocket could not travel to the moon because it has no air to push against once it left the Earth's atmosphere. That's in, that was in the 20th century, by the way. We now know that the idea was mistaken. What force propels a rocket when it is in a vacuum? The gases. The, the, the gases push against the rocket. Rocket push against the, the gases that are released. So it has to do with the release of the gases. Since the forces act since the force that acts on a cannonball when a cannon is fired is, uh, is equal and opposite to the force that acts on a cannon, does this imply zero net force and therefore the impossibility of an accelerating cannonball? Uh, the answer to 40, the force is that which the, exa the exhaust exerts. So the gas produced in the exhaust is what propels the rocket forward. It is the reaction to the force that the rocket exerts on the exhausted gases. Uh, no, you have equal forces for the cannonball, equal forces, but the cannonball has lower mass, so greater acceleration, and the cannon has larger mass, less acceleration. So, uh, no, there is, there is a force on the cannonball exerted by the expansion of gases in the cannon, and the cannonball accelerates. Action and reaction forces do not cancel, uh, because each acts on different object, one of the cannon, one on the cannonball, and the other on the cannon. Excellent answer to that question. I could not have said it better myself. Let's take a quick break. All right. Suppose you exert 200 newtons on your refrigerator and push it across the kitchen floor at a constant velocity. What friction force acts between the refrigerator and the floor. Is the friction force equal and opposite to your 200 newtons push? Does the friction force make up the reaction force to your push? Very interesting. Um, <clears throat> well, if you're exerting 200 newtons on the refrigerator and you're pushing it across the kitchen floor at a constant velocity, then you're pushing it horizontally. You're not lifting the refrigerator. So the only force that you're experiencing that's contrary to the force that you're exerting is that of friction. So yes, you push the, on the refrigerator uh, and, and, uh, and you could say that the refrigerator is, is, uh, is kind of pushing back, but it says, it says, um, it, says, uh, uh, it says what friction force acts between you and the refrigerator, 200 newtons, uh, is the friction force equal and opposite to your 200 newtons? Yes. And does the friction force make up the reaction force to your push? And the answer is no. The reaction to your push on the refrigerator is the refrigerator's push back on you. Always remember to pick the correct partner to an action. Uh, the reaction force to your push is the push on the refrigerator is the refrigerator's push back on you. So you push the refrigerator, the refrigerator pushes back on you. That's important. Uh, it's easy to make that mistake. Hold your hand 
like a flat wing outside the window of a moving vehicle. Then tilt it slightly upward and your hand will rise. Explain this in terms of Newton's third law. Well, hand will push on air, hand, uh, air, hand will push on air, air pushes on hand. Tilted hand diverts air downward. By Newton's third law, air pushes hand upward. Airplane flies this way. It's also a little bit different in terms of Bernoulli's principle, but it's the same idea, yes, action and reaction. You push on the air, the air pushes on you. Your teacher challenges you and your best friend to pull on a pair of scales attached to the ends of the horizontal rope in tug-of-war fashion so that the readings on the scale will differ. Can this be done? No, because each person is pulling equally on the rope. Uh, action, reaction. Whatever purple man pulls, red man will pull. So the scales will read the same. So it cannot be done. It cannot be done. Uh, even if you accelerated one way or another and somebody lost, uh, you're still going to have the same action-reaction pull. So coming up, looking for a... Uh, getting low battery here. Let me hook up the battery. And there it goes. Okay, so no, it's impossible for one end of the rope to be under greater tension than the other end. It's impossible for one end of the rope to be under greater tension than the other end. Make sure this is, you know, this is tricky stuff. It sounds simple, but uh, it can still be a little tricky. Remember, a tricky question is one you get wrong. You never call a tricky question tricky if you get it right. So avoid that avoid that contradiction. Okay, let's uh let's go on to the next question. Okay, a pair of 50 newton weights are attracted are attached to a spring scale as shown. Does the spring scale read 0, 50 or 100? Hint would it read any differently if one of the strings were held by your hand instead of being attached to a 50 newton weight? So, remember, action and reaction. Action and reaction. What is going to be the, the scale reading? The scale reading. What is going? It's not moving. Everything's balanced. Oh, so everything's balanced. So remember, action, reaction. Take your take your pick. Which one is going to be action? Which one is going to be reaction? And would there be any difference between the two? Action, reaction. Fifty newtons. Same as if the pulls were horizontal. Okay. So action, reaction. Next. The strong man can withstand the tension force exerted by the two horses pulling in opposite directions. How would the tension compare if only one horse pulled and the left rope were tied to the tree? How would the tension compare if two horses pulled in the same direction with the left rope to the tree? So would there be any difference? Is the strong man exerting more force or less force or what the case may be? Remember, the strong man is attached to the tree. The strong man is attached to the tree. The, the wild card here is that the strong man could exert more force uh, if he wants to. He would just compress his muscles differently. But based on the way the, ant the question is set up and action-reaction, there's not much of a choice here to choose from. So it would be the same. If two horses pull in the same direction, then the tension in the ropes is doubled. Okay, The tension in the rope is doubled, and he's going to have to double it because he's his muscles. A balloon floats motionless in the air. A balloonist begins climbing up the support cable. In which direction does the balloon move? as the balloonist climbs, explain. So the balloonist is exerting a force and 
therefore the balloon is going to exert a force. So the guy can only climb if what? When you get up from a sitting position, do your feet push against the floor with a force equal to more than or less than your weight? Explain. Okay, to climb upward means pulling the rope downward, which moves the balloon downward as the person climbs. Will the person actually make it? That's the question. More than your weight because you accelerate upward and push against the floor to do so. So once you're standing, though, then the forces cancel. Number 50, when a weightlifter jerks a barbell over his head, is the force exerted on the barbell more, less, uh, more than, less than, or equal to the barbell's weight? More than, because the barbell is, accel is accelerated upward. Okay, next. Identify two pairs of action-reaction force that exist when you stand on a scale. Identify two pairs of action reaction forces that exist when you stand on a scale. Two pairs of action reaction forces. Well, you're standing on your one pair is the earth pulls you down, you pull upward on earth. Another pair, you push down on the scale, the scale pushes upward on you. You just have to pick the object and then relate that object to another object. As long as both objects are related, then you're fine. You know, you start with you, and you do the earth. Then the earth does you. And same thing with the scale. You do the scale, the scale does you. And you're fine. Okay, next. 52. We're almost there. We've got 10 problems left. All right. We have to change the time frame. All right, hold on. All right, a car of mass M cruises along a highway to constant velocity V. The tires push backward on the road with a force F. The reaction to this force provides the forward force on the car. Wind resistance against the car is R. Using symbols, what is the net force on the car? Using symbols, what is the acceleration on the car? Okay, well the uh, the net force would be the F minus R uh, would be the net force, and when F and R are equal and opposite, then you have the constant velocity, and the acceleration of the car would be the net force divided by M, so that when F and R cancel each other uh, relative to uh, equal and opposite magnitude and direction respectively, then A equals zero and uh, you're not going to have any. So, and then a friend says that the car, said since the car is moving forward, there must be a net forward force. So I'm just going to stop it there, because it's a constant velocity, so there can't be. So if, the, if it's going in constant velocity, then F and R have to cancel. So an initial net force gets the car moving, but once it reaches a constant velocity, then A equals zero, so F net equals zero when F and R have the same magnitude and opposite signs. They don't have opposite signs. Okay. 53, I think I have 53 and 54 together. Uh, 53 would be um, uh, 53 would be what will be the acceleration of recoil when a 60 kilogram person on roller skates pushes against the wall with a force of 30 newtons. Uh, two people at attempt to tug a war at low friction ice. On low friction ice, one person has four times the mass of the other relative to acceleration of the heavier person. What will be the acceleration of the lighter person? Okay, the acceleration of the first one, they're going to recoil at 30 newtons, so it's going to be 30 newtons divided by 60 kilograms or 0.5 meters per second squared away from the wall. That's what the, the recoil will be. And the two people on the ice, low friction ice, one person is four times the mass of the other. Both people experience the same amount of force. So one-fourth the mass for the same force results in four times the acceleration. And four times the mass is one, so four times the mass is one fourth the acceleration, and four times the mass and one fourth the mass is four times the acceleration. Two blocks, one three times as massive as the other, are connected by a compression 
compression spring. When the spring is released, both blocks fly apart relative to the acceleration of the heavier block. What is the acceleration of the lighter block? So let's say you have two blocks, heavy and light. HL, heavy, light. Well, the heavier block will have a third of the acceleration of the other, and the lighter block will have three times the acceleration of the other. So, because mass and acceleration are uh, inversely proportionate. So, that's the answer, and that's all she wrote. What do you think? Let's consider it while we're waiting for the answer. What do you think? Do you agree with me, or am I wrong? One-third the mass for the same force means three times the acceleration, and vice versa. Okay. So that's it. I believe that's it. I, don't, I do not believe there's a 56th. I think 55 is it. We'll stop and check. And if I don't come back, have a great time. Oh, there's 56 and 57. Okay. What is the net force on a falling 100 Newton barrel hitting a pavement with 5 Newtons, 5,000 Newtons of force? Uh, what is the net force on a falling 100 Newton barrel hitting a pavement with 5,000 Newtons of force? F net is 5,000 Newtons minus 100 Newtons, uh, 4,900 Newtons upward for the 5,000 Newton force on the pavement is matched by 5,000 Newtons acting on the barrel. Okay, uh, Amanda looks at a one kilogram bag of jelly beans resting on the table. Calculate the amount of force that the table exerts on the bag of jelly beans. So it would be 10 Newtons. Uh, she's looking at one kilogram bag of jelly beans resting on the table. So it's going to be one kilogram times ten as weight. So it's going to have a normal force of ten newtons. It'll have a weight of ten newtons and a normal force of ten newtons. So, uh, B, how, how does this compare with the force that the bag of jelly beans exerts on the table? And that'll be the same. Uh, 10 kilogram, 10, 1 kilogram bag weighs 10 newtons and exerts 10 newtons of force on the table. The table exerts 10 newtons reaction force on the bag. Okay, let's check the time. I'll be right back. If I don't, if I don't see you, I'll see you. Make sure you're ready for the quizzes and tests coming up. Okay, we have to go up to question 61, then we're finished. Okay, when 56 kilograms... Diane on roller skates pushes against a wall with a force 28 newtons. When 56 kilogram Diane on roller skates pushes against a wall with a force of 28 newtons, she accelerates away from the wall. Show that Diana's recoil is 0.5. Well, it's going to be... Um, uh, It'll be F equals MA, and so it's 28 divided by 56 equals A, and that's going to be, uh, that's going to be 0.5. So, so 28 divided by 56 is 0.5, and the forces are equal and opposite. Okay, that was kind of easy. I'm not quite sure what the problem is with that. They're equal and opposite. So... That's what happens, okay? Let me change the time frame on this. Okay, A equals F over M, and then 28 over 56 is 0.5, and that's what we said. Okay, a 7 kilogram bowling ball moving at 8 meters per second strikes a 1 kilogram bowling pin and slows to 7 meters per second in 0 0.04 seconds. Okay show that the force of impact on the bowling ball is 175 newtons how much force acts on the bowling pin so a seven kilogram bowling ball moving at eight meters per second strikes a one kilogram bowling pin and slows to seven meters per second in point zero four seconds this is like a momentum problem actually show that the force of impact on the bowling ball is 175 newtons how much force acts on the bowling pin Okay, here's the first one. So F equals MA, so F equals M times the change in velocity over time, which is good. And then what's next? 
as they say when the plot thickens. The plot thickens. Okay, do you get that first part? We're just splitting up A into uh, VF minus VI over a T. All right. Uh, let's put this on pause and see what's coming up. Hold on. Okay, I checked the times and I kind of reduced them. And what's going to happen is you're going to take um, the difference of the of the velocity, so it'll be 7 minus 8 divided by 0 0.04 times 7 uh, kilograms, and that will be uh, negative 175. So negative 175. And then, uh, relative to Newton's third law, uh, B would be the force on the bowling pin would be plus 175 newtons. So equal and opposite. Next, a 7 kilogram skydiver is falling at her terminal speed. Show that she exerts a seven, 700 newton downward force on the air as she falls. As she falls. Well, her weight's going to be 700 newtons. So the force uh, air on diver is going to be mg, that's skydiver of course, uh, it's going to be mg and her uh, mass is 70 kilograms and it's going to be uh, 700 newtons. So it's got to be equal and opposite so the upward is going to be uh, 700 newtons and the downward is going to be 700 newtons. So by Newton's third law 700 newtons is equal and opposite to the force of air on diver. So it's no big deal. So relative to Newton's third law, it should make sense. Upward and downward are equal magnitude and opposite in direction. Gymnast Gracie of weight mg is suspended by a pair of vertical ropes attached to the ceiling. A, in terms of Gracie's weight, what is the tension in each rope? If Gracie's mass is 300 kilograms, show that the tension in each rope is 150 newtons. Well, uh, if she's not accelerating, then her it's going to be 150 in each arm, uh, 150 in each rope, and uh, she her weight is 300 newtons. So 300 times 10 divided by 2 is 150. So that is the answer to both A and B. Uh, so the two rope tensions are equal and opposite to her weights, exactly what I said. So the tension in each rope is mg over 2. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll just let this play out uh, and let you consider the answers, but I'm really done. And I just got B to get through, and then we're finished. So good luck. Make sure that you take notes and give them to me, and uh, we will... Um, see what we can see on tomorrow's uh, quizzes, tomorrow or the next day's quizzes and uh, tests that's coming up for chapters 3, 6, and 7.